coming up on Ag Week TV. The cold, wet spring may mean more prevented plant acres this year. Grand Farm announces its new permanent location for its Innovation Center. A Minnesota FFA chapter is being nationally recognized for its work on mental health. And we'll visit a Suffolk sheep farm that's bringing the pasture right to your pizza. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. Farmers in Minnesota and the Dakotas have yet to begin planting corn, and planting is behind in much of the country due to the cold, wet weather. On May 1st of last year, 42% of the corn acres were planted. This year, the 14% national number is the lowest since 2013. And it's even worse in the Northern Corn Belt. The Dakotas and Minnesota have virtually no corn planted as of May 1st. However, at 35%, Iowa is ahead of the national average, but still behind its state average for this time of year. The situation is similar with soybeans. The Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, and the nation all lagging behind averages. Planted wheat acres are a mixed bag, with North Dakota and Minnesota well behind, but South Dakota and Montana sitting in good shape so far. Spring wheat is about 9% behind nationally. Sugar beet acres are the biggest difference. North Dakota has nothing planted and Minnesota is at 1%. Both are normally in the 30% range during an average year. The late planting is also bumping the final dates for crop insurance coverage, too close for comfort for some farmers. It's this week's Ag Week cover story. I, I'm not aware of any acres that have actually gone in. Okay. I don't think anybody's been in the field. Mike Cazette is a farmer and crop insurance agent near Hillsboro, North Dakota. He thinks farmers in his area are a good 10 days from getting into the fields. Most are just too wet and the soil is too cold. Many fields are covered with flood water and some even still have snow. We're starting to get a concern about how, how late it is, obviously. Uh, We've got super saturated soils. If more rain falls and planting continues to be delayed, some farmers might start thinking about whether prevented plant is a viable option. That decision will be more complicated this year for corn growers because the price is much higher than it was when it was set in February at 590. In North Dakota, the final date for most counties for corn planting is May 25th, so Kazed says farmers are going to have to do some math. Is it still a better bet to get the seed in the ground and even a 10% or a 15% uh, reduced crop, will that make you more money? And I think that's what farmers are going to have to really calculate this year and compare that to what they get on their prevent plant provision. I think there's some, some anxiety out there in the countryside. Harrison Weber is executive director of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association. Sugar beets don't fall into the prevented plant program. The average planting start date for them is May 5th, and nothing's been planted yet. But Weber says they're trying to stay optimistic. We've had 30 ton beets planted in April, and we've had you know nice big crops planted on the first couple days of June yet. And so there's, there's opportunity. Warming weather means farmers will likely start getting into fields next week. But even if the fields are ready, in some places roads leading to them may not be accessible because of flooding. Certainly could delay guys from, you know, maybe they'll have to go three, four miles to go around a section. Uh, to get to their quarter or something like that. But we've been here before, and uh, it probably won't be the last late spring that we'll experience. You can read more on our cover story in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Grain and input prices were high even before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but the uncertainty it adds will likely keep prices high for at least a year. That's according to a prominent ag economist and trade expert Mikkel Pates talked to recently in Washington, D.C. Emily, the big topic at the North American Agricultural Journalist Organization is input costs and market volatility, especially regarding Russia and Ukraine. The thing people re forget about is that 20 years ago, these countries, uh, Ukraine and Russia, were net importers of wheat. You know, this has all transformed over the last 20 years. So, you know, Egypt and other countries that depend on them, they'll find other suppliers. We're not going to run out of wheat, but we're seeing what the impacts are. Prices are up 25% from what they were pre-war levels. And again, they were already very, very high. Glauber says it's unlikely grain prices will come down before the summer of 2023, and it could be 2024 before markets return to pre-invasion levels. A controversial soybean crushing plant is a step closer to reality. The Castleton City Council approved the plant this week, despite opposition from some neighbors. Jeff Beach was at the meeting where they voiced their concerns. 
The North Dakota soybean processors are building the plant. Construction on the $400 million project will likely start this summer, despite fears it will cause problems for residents and the nearby Thurlton ethanol plant. Do we want to live in an industrial park or do we want to live in a community? Of course, we choose community every time. Several Castleton area residents turned out for the city council meeting, expressing concerns like increased pollution, noise, and heavy truck traffic from a plant so close to town. Does it need to be rushed tonight? Can we make everybody just a little happier, still get it, and move it outside the town just a little bit? Former EMT Greg Kempel says he's concerned about public safety. I am appalled that we are not looking at moving this three miles out of town, where farmers are willing to swap land. We shouldn't be seeing the public suffer here. Steve Onan, president of the North Dakota Soybean Processors, says they've tried to address residents' concerns. He says they want to be good for the community, and it's a growing opportunity for future generations. He says the chosen site has the needed rail access and cannot be moved. We're here today asking for your continued support and for the opportunities that this project is going to bring to the city of Castleton. Councilmember Joan Carvel says the public has had many opportunities to speak up. There were four information meetings, and I stayed after every meeting. Not one citizen who opposed this came and talked to me. Not everyone is opposed to the plant. Some say benefits to the community will far outweigh the negatives. I support the crush plant and the legacy it will build and the future growth and prosperity for Castleton. The plant is outside the Castleton city limits, but as part of an agreement approved by the council, North Dakota soybean processors will give the city $100,000 a year for 15 years in exchange for not being annexed. Only one council member voted against the plant. Thanks, Jeff. Up next on AgWeek TV, the Grand Farm gets a new home that will allow for ag innovation expansion. For home delivery of AgWeek, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement, took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summer's VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summer's Super Coulter Samurai. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summer's Manufacturing. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I got. Okay guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bag would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? Don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. Last year's drought really cut into yields for some growers. Couple that with high and rising fertilizer costs, and that can lead to real problems for growers. But there is a solution. Aquayield products save you money because you use much less. If the average price of what you're going to use in the Aquayield products is anywhere from $12 to $15 per acre, you can compare that to standard fertilizers that would be up in that $50 to $60 per acre. AquaEal's efficiency comes through the use of nano-liquid technology. But we've had proof of where farmers can see a bushel increase. AquaEal is unique in that it can be deployed as a delivery vehicle into micro and macronutrients and other crop protection products a grower is already using. It protects them in the patented AquaEal nanoparticle. These tiny particles penetrate root and leaf tissue, improving absorption into the plant. Nano-liquid technology truly lets you use less and yield more. It's fun to sit down with the producers and go through the details of what nanotechnology is all about. 
The groundbreaking Grand Farm is getting a new home. The farm was started in 2019 as a place for ag innovation. Mickle Pates explains what the move means for its growth. Grand Farm, which had started south of Fargo, is moving to Castleton, North Dakota because of its community connections and its visibility. We needed more land, so at the Grand Farm test site, which has been fantastic, we outgrew that, and so we looked for a place where we could build the big vision around it. Brian Carroll is director of the Grand Farm. It started on 40 acres south of Fargo, dedicated to developing autonomous, high-tech agriculture, but it was temporary. The new site is 150 acres, and that will house permanent buildings designed for ag innovation and collaboration. So we were looking for locations that were close to the interstate so that the Grand Farm could be visible to people that are coming into the region. And so that was one of the criteria that we identified, along with the infrastructure as well. We wanted to be uh, have a, a place where it would be accessible from the interstate, off the roads, bring water and power out there. Castleton is already home to several agribusinesses, including a major ethanol plant and a planned soybean crushing plant. The community's economic development director says the Grand Farm can only attract visitors and more innovative ag businesses. There is the potential, certainly, to build out around uh, the Grand Farm and, and uh, you know, companies and partners that are expecting to do a lot of business here and participate in their events. We can certainly see them uh, locating, um, you know, either in Castleton or without, around the region. North Dakota's lieutenant governor says a multi-million dollar Grand Farm initiative will be right at home on some of the region's richest farmland in the neighborhood of the region's first Bonanza Farms and close to some of the nation's most advanced ag and UAV research at NDSU and UND. The future of farming with more and more autonomy is upon us, it's coming, and so why not have that innovation happening here? So a community that has a unique spot in North Dakota's early commercial agriculture now has a spot in its future. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Castleton, North Dakota. Construction of the new Grand Farm is expected to begin at the end of the year. A North Dakota State University professor was recently granted $450,000 for his agricultural research. Barney Geddes' research is focused on how microbes can help certain crops grow better and boost yields. The microbes he works with act as a natural nitrogen source, which is a fertilizer that many crops need to help with overall yield. Geddes hopes his research will eventually help farmers lower their input costs. I mean, that's really our main motivation here. Um, I grew up on a small family farm as well, and I can see fertilizers are becoming the main inputs in most farmers' agricultural systems. So this is becoming more and more expensive. The war in Ukraine has even made it, made it more expensive for fertilizers even yet, so they're well over double what they were last year. Geddes received the New Innovator in Food and Agriculture Research Award and grant from the Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research. A farm in southeast North Dakota has had Suffolk sheep for decades, but a couple years ago they decided to diversify their operation. I visited Wolf Suffolk's and Oaks to learn more about their unique business venture. Been in the Suffolk business for over 40 some years. Ron Wolf grew up on his family's farm right outside of Oaks, North Dakota. He and his father worked together on the operation. Now, the next generation is getting involved too. I uh, was a partner with my dad for many years. My dad actually is still alive, but my little daughter has bought his ewes out now, and so we've been a family affair. The wolves run about 60 commercial ewes on their farm and sell their offspring to 4-H members and other breeders. But five years ago, they began butchering their lambs that didn't sell and marketing them directly to consumers. Proud to say that we have not gone to the sale barn with lambs in the last three years. So here's some of our lamb with our own label. The wolves butcher about 40 head a year and sell their product directly off the farm and at the Red River Farmer's Market in Fargo. I met him at the Farmer's Market and talked to him and Beth and just thought they were really cool and they started bringing in ground lamb for me and then we've tried a few other cuts for things. Casey Absey is the owner of Blackbird Woodfire Pizza in downtown Fargo. They use fresh ingredients on their pizzas and other dishes whenever they can. Absey believes it's important to source locally when possible. I think it's important to try and use all you can from around here because we are such a rich farming community. Absey feels his customers enjoy eating local and knowing where their food comes from directly. Most of them appreciate that it comes from Ron's farm. They like the, the fact that they know where it comes from. Wolf is also on the North Dakota Lamb and Wool Producers Board. Still ahead, a Minnesota FFA chapter takes national honors for its work on mental health.
For over 130 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska has been providing protection from the unexpected. Farmers and ranchers choose Farmers Mutual insurance coverage for their industry experience, prompt claim service, and unmatched financial strength. Experience an insurance plan that's customized for your operation. Visit fmne.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. Systems way could work, could bake in a good life. Let's me live my way. Could work, could bake in a good life. Trans systems way could work, could bake in a good life. Let's me live my way. It's trans systems way could work. At Gateway Building Systems, we provide unmatched service to all of our customers. Butler Builder understands this. We combine creative design capabilities with superior workmanship to deliver optimal building solutions. Our team provides insight that takes you from the ground up to build your future. Gateway Building Systems and Butler Buildings are designed for strength, durability, and longevity. We are here to build your project and maintain it for the next generation. The heavy rainfall is making many people wonder if drier, warmer weather could be on the horizon. Here's Jared with our Agri Weather Outlook. I'm Storm Tracker Meteorologist Jared Piepenberg here with Ag Week TV and talking about our general outlook over the next couple of weeks as we continue throughout May. It's been a wet spring so far for some parts of the region with flooding in parts of the Red River Valley and surrounding area and just frequent rain and showers. And looks like some of us will continue that. And where we do have the wet weather, it is going to stay generally cooler as well. Although not too far away, looks like parts of the Midwest will start, warm up, uh, start to warm up quite nicely ahead. So let's get into it here. Let's jump in the upper atmosphere and talk about how things are shaping up here as we head throughout the week ahead. Looks like we're going to see a dip across the West Coast over the Rockies in the upper atmosphere. And with this dip, what's going to happen here is we're going to start to see some waves in the upper, upper atmosphere and some energy kind of flowing over the plains, northern plains, parts of the upper Midwest, which will bring chances of rain and some showers out there. These are going to be on and off chances worth monitoring here in the week ahead. And this will likely be the pattern all week long and looks like this may even set up shop into next week as well. So this is midweek. As we head toward the end of the work week and head toward the weekend, we're still going to see some chances of showers and thunder showers potentially moving through parts of the plains and upper Midwest, where the East Coast will end up just having the ridge in some warmer air. Sometimes those, those disturbances do undercut that ridge and bring some showers and thunderstorms that direction. But the general pattern looks like parts of the Northern Plains, Central Plains will end up staying a little wetter and it'll be a little warmer off toward the East. So let's talk about that precipitation outlook here for the week ahead. It looks a little drier down from Eastern Texas up across the Northeast. You see the dry is there and then parts of the, the Rockies, across Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, looking a little wetter here for this week. And it's going to be similar in the next week as well, which I'll show you here in just a minute. As we go toward the 6 to 10 day outlook, temperature wise, looking below average across the West Coast, including the Pacific Northwest. That's where we have that, di that dip in the upper atmosphere. East of that area, temperatures are looking warmer, which does include parts of the Midwest and kind of the just kind of southeast of most of us here. So temperatures will be warming up kind of nicely. And then the western edge of the Dakotas will be kind of that equal 
equal chance of, of uh, being kind of between below or above, just depends on the day. Precipitation outlook for next week. As I mentioned, looking similar here with the Dakotas, Minnesota, parts of the Northern Plains, upper Midwest, looking to stay a little wetter. And that's just gonna be those on and off chances with that dip from the West Coast, kind of moving into the plains and sending those uh, little impulses our direction. And as you notice, this almost looks like the same map with temperatures staying cooler, where we have that dip in the upper atmosphere and warmer off toward the east. So parts of the Northern Plains next week, kind of equal chances there of being uh, below or above, just will likely depend on the day coming up here. So that's the way things are shaping up. Looks like some of the wet weather will continue for the Dakotas, Minnesota, and parts of the upper Midwest. Saline can leave parts of a field unproductive, but now there's a solution. An Arizona company is taking technology developed for golf courses and using it to take salts out of the soil. Calcium is kind of the bully of the soil, and so it pushes off the other nutrients off of the uh, soil colloids. It was black. The headlands were black, and nothing was growing. Even weeds had a tough time. Then we met up with, with Jim, came with a product called Calcine. Between the drain tile and Calcine, you see now that we have vegetation. We have actual corn coming here. Our experience is normally along roadsides, whether it be highway, putting salt on highways and, and that getting up in the fields or satellite imagery, we looked at it, you can see exactly where the calcine was. We have more growth in those areas. It is worth the investment. I mean, we've got growth, we've got things that are happening, so that's encouraging. Contact Erickson Custom Operations for more information. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. It's going to be an interesting year in agriculture. We have already seen the markets trade to new crop highs and levels not seen in years. There is uncertainty around the 2022 growing season. Will drought impact production? How many acres will be switched? And will demand remain strong? Are you getting the information you need to make the right marketing decisions? With the changing market environment, maybe it's time to change how you approach your grain marketing. Let Martinson Ag Risk Management get you the news that matters and a marketing plan that suits your needs. AuctionBlock.com First with online equipment auctions in 1999. First in worldwide registered users. AuctionBlock.com Online farm, construction, and transportation equipment auctions every Wednesday. Sell with the leader. Call AuctionBlock today, 218-483-7880 or visit us online at AuctionBlock.com Chatfield, Minnesota FFA students are becoming known for their work on mental health. The chapter placed third in the National Chapter Award Program for its Break the Stigma Challenge. For the first time in three years, the Minnesota FFA convention was back in person. Nearly 5,000 students gathered in Minneapolis to take part in learning sessions, workshops, and competitions. A very important issue took top honors in the Models of Innovation category. This year we did the Break the Sigma, which is something that was really important to us because mental health matters in our school. Chatfield students have been working on the program for several years. Chapter advisor Stacy Fritz says many students struggle with mental health issues, especially during the pandemic. So they knew it was an important time to put the program together. Our community has had a couple of losses recently, and our students have struggled quite a bit because of that, between that and the pandemic. So it was an important time to put that together. It's programs like this that have helped them become a three-star chapter at Nationals four years in a row. It's because FFA has been a big part of my life since my freshman year of high school that um, I've become like so involved over the past four years that um, it's become like a second life to me. This was Minnesota's 93rd FFA convention. The state has 15,000 student members. That's the highest number since the 1980s. Coming up, a conservation group is honored for its work preserving bird habitats.
Spray Advantage is a full-line, full-service dealer with everything you need for fertilizer and chemical applications, like electronics from Microtrack and Raven, pumps by Banjo and John Blue, a full line of poly parts, tanks, and spray tips. We support the equipment we sell with factory-trained service technicians and a well-stocked parts department. It's our commitment to offer you quality products at competitive prices with the best financing options available. Spray Advantage, proudly serving North Dakota and Minnesota. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation. With a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate, and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. A North Dakota nonprofit has been recognized for its conservation efforts. Audubon North Dakota received the Environmental Award from Riverkeepers for their Urban Woods and Prairie Initiative in the Fargo-Moorhead community. The initiative was founded in 2014 to increase bird habitat along the Red River. Through that effort, we are restoring habitat, uh, so prairie acres and then woodland acres as well. Um, for the benefit of, of our urban birds, pollinators, wildlife, um, restoring ecological services like flood resiliency, which is obviously very important here in the Red River. The public is welcome to Audubon Dakota's Birding Festival Saturday, May 14th at Forest River Nature Park in Fargo. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. A veteran hemp farmer in Minnesota talks about getting beginning hemp farmers started and challenges that come with the crop. And a retired NDSU weed scientist has been honored by the Western Society of Weed Science. We appreciate you watching Ag Week TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up on all your ag news. See you next week.